Hello, hello. Kingston Academy, how are you doing? I just shot you, I'm back in northern Michigan, in the middle of nowhere, look it up on a map, um, up near Canada. I wanted to shoot you a quick little video response to all your awesome questions. I've got to get back in the car because I've just did this video, walked all the way down the beach, and as I mentioned in that video, which is gone, um, sometimes when it gets really cold here, you can't do this because the phone gets too cold and shuts down. And that's what just happened. So I'm getting back in the car um, <laughs> before this shuts down. But don't want to do this again. So, Mr. Terrell asked me to, whoa, slipped on ice. This, that is ice down there. <laughs> so he asked me to shoot a little video for you guys. So here we are. Thank you again for all your questions and thank you for having me uh, about a week and a half. Just got back um, and it's Monday morning, so you guys will be watching this in your <laughs> assembly soon. Conditions here, it's minus five today. Luckily, as you'll see, very flat, because obviously it's the wind that'll be like, ooh. And um, as English people, or most of us watching this, I assume, or at least living in England, that's a lake which still it takes a while to get my head round because you know, huge boats go on there. You can't see the other side. There's a little bit of a tide sometimes and that will freeze over. So that is nuts. Anyway, let's just give you an idea of where I am. And um, people always say as well, God, how do you handle the cold and all the temperature? I get colder in England because I suppose this is another like life lesson. When you prepare um, for the conditions, the adversities, it's absolutely fine. But in England, we always go out when it's cold. We wear jeans, jumper maybe a jacket that's it for all year even when it's really cold um you get wet and stuff whereas here you can't just rock out you wear the right clothes and uh yeah it's absolutely fine lots of times i'm absolutely roasting because you've got the layers on and you just check the because when it's minus 20 you can't um literally you can't wander out there <laughs> without the right clothes on anyway it's two minutes in, so I want—I know you got big days ahead, lessons, adversity, um, and school, and everything out of school. So I've jot down a few of the questions, selected like five or so of the questions that you sent to me, and I'll announce as well my favourite question. And I don't know who that's from, so I'd love to know that to win the signed copy of the book that I left for you guys. Okay, question number one: After what you've gone through, and others, or you've interviewed, what do you think is the purpose of life? a good question for me in the broadest sense the purpose of life is to find your purpose in life something that fires you up something that does good something that you know you only get one shot at this there's no point doing something that ultimately is you're not going to get happiness from even if you're good at it oh low battery just kicked and that just reminded me i got to plug this in <laughs> so just at least that will help me be brief so that was oh I think the purpose of life, especially at your age, guys, is to experience and just slowly work out and find your way, head in the general direction. Don't put pressure on yourself to know, yes, that's 16, 15, 17, this is what I'm going to do. You may you may have that clarity and that's awesome, but that can change. That's all right. But at least, you know, it's heading in the right direction for the right reasons. Just if you've got something very clear that you think this is what I want to do 100%, this is what I'm going to be then just, okay, what's their day like? What are they actually doing? Will that fulfill you long term? Um, don't just go for the easy option or is that just a stepping stone? Because all and everything you do, if you approach it in the right way, even if you do nothing to do with that virtually in later life, it's in your locker, it's your experiences, you can use it to um, become a strength. I think teaching, um, the years I did teaching, you guys can be brutal. So I, you know, in terms of speaking, I mean, I speak to hundreds and hundreds of people in big audiences. Um, yeah, I've done worse. Nothing can be as brutal as um, some of the, you know, the classes and groups. I worked in pupil referral units and um, secure units, all sorts of the whole spectrum and really nice, fancy posh schools all the way down to not so fancy. So you could say, oh, you don't use it now, but oh, yeah, I do use that. That's That's always, you know. You can drop me in the most adverse situations and I've, I've been in worse. <laughs> okay, so that's the purpose of life, I think. Um, well, the purpose of life is to be a good human and to make a dent 
a positive dent in the planet. That's mine. What are your thoughts on laws of attraction? Laws of attraction. Some of you may have heard of, when you think of laws of attraction, a lot of people talk about, there's a famous book, The Secret, and a movie, The Secret, a documentary movie. Um, sometimes people interpret that, I think, in the wrong way, and it, purely on, on the laws of attraction there, if, if you just think about something, this is going to happen. Like, you think about, you know, you think about a car, and it's just going to drop on with a big bow on it. That's not quite how it works. So, my approach to the laws of attraction, yes, <laughs> but it's very much an action oriented laws of attraction so if you start putting yourself in environments arenas even you know with the internet now it doesn't matter where you are if you start connecting to the right people the right groups like-minded individuals or you know areas and aspects you want to learn more about become then yes and also on the flip side of that if you're academically doing really good in school and you know you're doing legendary on paper yeah laws of attraction yeah I was gonna make sure I'm answering the right question a bigger impact, the highest probability of the deepest impact is going to be who you spend your time with, who you attract and who attracts you. Much like if you're doing really good at school, um, but then you're hanging out with a load of people constantly, consistently, like the you know some of the five people you spend the most time with that aren't doing so well or aren't heading in the right direction or don't want to particularly at this time in their life. They may, they, you know, they, everyone has a chance to come good. That's going to really impact you and what you're doing now. On the flip side, if you're academically really struggling or struggling in school and, and not doing well by your standards currently or anyone's standards currently, um, but you're hanging out um, with a really positive group that are, you know, are looking to pursue to get better and do something with their lives, ultimately you're going to be the, the sixth person and that's going to put you in the right direction. That's the biggest um, predictor of doing well is, you know, that environment. And if you're in current environments where you cannot get away from certain people, you don't have to engage in complaining, whining, that kind of talk. Um, so that's important. Be very careful about what you allow and put into your head daily. Okay? That's that one. How do you stay motivated? Links back to the first one. Having a strong, clear purpose and something that, uh, you know, um, inspires you to to do these things. Um, there's, you know, it's very, I can't think of a job that would um, motivate me to travel all around the world and the UK, um, sacrificing seeing you know certain family members on short trips and spend a lot of my money to go around and come into your school. Um, I can't imagine a job where that would fire me up. It, it may exist, and it would be a very specific job, so I'm always open to that. And if anyone wants to give me a job doing that, that'd be brilliant. Um, but something that inspires you. Um, to go the extra mile, because um, as I say, if the difference between inspiration and desperation, um, if you're doing the same amount of work, could be a lot of work, one will burn you out, do the same amount of work, and you're inspired, and you'll just have boundless energy, so that's another a key thing, like, to in terms of linking back to your purpose as well. Number four, your favourite interview and why, why was it interesting? That's a tough one. That is a very tough one. Favourite interview. Mm, there are so many for specific reasons. So I could give you, if I was told, oh, what's your favourite interview for this aspect of life or for the life lesson? And uh, not a plug, but the book has like 20 of, not all my favourites, but you know, the ones that are very inspiring for specific reasons. Um, one of the, oh, I'm going to have two. I'm going to have two. And I'm going to keep it to two because it could even go more. Uh, for specific reasons, I know the first one that jumps to mind, and I mentioned it briefly, I think, in our conversation, our talk in your school, was James Butler from Canada. Um, similar sort of environment to this. Um, yeah, the only interview I ever did that I said during the interview, this is going in the book. Um, inspiring story um, of a, you know someone with a very strong purpose and a very, very you know, core of just wanting to be a high performer but have an impact help others and make a difference um and then ultimately as well um yeah just yeah taken at 28 and our whole all our conversations always about you know people living for a long time and not really living um which is what i 
I hope for all of you doesn't happen. Um, and then the flip side, you know, some people get taken too soon, but they've lived a lot and they've made a big difference. And that's the category he falls into because he's not with us anymore. Um, okay. And um, the other one linked to that, um, Lance Allred, um, the first deaf player in the NBA. There's a lot of reasons. His story is all about grit, determination, perseverance. If he had any special talents, other than being six foot ten, um, that would be it. Um, made the NBA at 26 years of age, which is like, you know, in the normal world, that's like, I don't know, it's like graduating university for the first time when you're like 45, as in like most people think it's not going to happen. Um, but he, he, he did that. And um, his story of overcoming adversity, just like having that clear purpose and goal and just being relentless. And as I say, I'm a big basketball fan. So that was special for me. And now I'm happy to class him as one of my friends and uh, absolute legend. Um, very cool guy. So he's featured in the book as well. Okay. What made you move to America? Number five on my little questions. What made me move to America? We talk, I talked about clear vision or visions or not even clear visions at your age. At your age, I knew I wanted to move to America in some shape or form. I just, I was into basketball more. I was massively into movies. And obviously, most of the good movies, especially then, were um, in America. Uh, my best friend um, at school, he moved across, his family moved across when he was 11. And I went out to visit him at 16, um, where I was. Basketball and a lot of sport in school was very, you know, not really, no one was that bothered about it. Um, and I was a bit of a weirdo for being so much into basketball. Uh, when I went over there, you know, they're doing pep rallies, um, the classic jocks, and, like, sport is a really big thing, especially high school sport. Um, America was always, to me, California. And then I met my wife. I didn't realise, because I met her in England at university, and she um, is American. And her mum is from this little town up here, Roger City. Um, it's like 1950s America. We used to visit every summer. And... Yeah, it's random and out of the way, but it's, you know, it's beautiful. You know, no one locks their cars, their doors. There's zero crime. I've got two young boys. So that was a big motivator. And why we end up here and not California, which I haven't ruled out, but you need to be to have any kind of good lifestyle. In a, Again, this is open to interpretation for the what we're looking for um, at this stage in our lives. We would probably have downsized from England to California because California is as expensive as areas of London if not more expensive in a lot of areas um, so for now you know northern Michigan is the right thing and right space and there's a lot of crime in California too <laughs> not here okay final question how were you able to find yourself after your horrible accident talk a lot about this in the book and I know our conversation or the talk I did at your school was um, brief-ish So there's no magic pill, no quick fix. It was just turning up every day with the th with the faith that it's it's going to get better um, and ultimately hitting rock bottom, which is because I was trying to, I wanted it to get better as I was on the way day, but down. But when it's getting worse each day, that's really tough. Um, find yourself, yes, yeah, to just be very resilient. And stay in there and know if you, it's, it's very tough. It's different for everyone. I, I tackle this subject in the book, which is going to be, Mr. Trail assures me, was going to be available in your library for all those. You can go on Amazon and grab it. Uh, but for all those who, um, your students at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> limited resources or more limited than some people. Um, so that's going to be available in your school library. And one of you is going to get it. But I dig into that um, and take from other people. But yeah. Do the fundamentals, the foundations, you know, go for a walk daily, you know, little things or big things. They can maybe big things at the time when you're really struggling and just just be committed to being, you know, finding yourself, being happier and, you know, keep pursuing and just be open. And that comes back to the, you know, the laws of attraction and making sure you're very careful about who you spend your time with. You know, even in environments like school where you're kind of, there's a, you know, you're fixed in certain areas that you have to go to and spend time with certain people, but that doesn't, that doesn't dictate what you, 
what who you prioritize and who you spend within these little groups and also um yeah you you create your own environments and outside of school as well so i think that's important um but just as i say stick in there and um if you're getting slightly better than yesterday if you feel a bit down that's all we can ask because you know this we're in this for the long game you know if you get one percent better every day you know in a year that's 365 percent better that's that's ridiculous that's huge so go for the the small little daily gains and that comes through little daily actions and doing things that realistically you know are going to help you but you don't feel like doing them the days especially when you think i can't be bothered i don't want to do them they're the days that just turn up day after day um and do the right things do things that you respect yourself for um because that's the first thing don't just do things to please other people all the time you know firstly you've got to please the person in the mirror and generally for most of us if you're doing that you're doing the right thing so hope this helped guys um yeah if you can ever find me in northern michigan you're all welcome to come visit and uh, please collect, connect with me on social media the easiest one is instagram awaken uh, adam lewis walker uh, there is awaken ralph for the people who've read the book on instagram as well um but yeah let me know your thoughts i'm very approachable and if you've got any other questions follow-ups but i hope this helped i hope you have a nice day guys and who knows one day i'm sure i'll be back um down your way um, i'm back in the summer i know that already but okay cheers guys bye